Hey everybody! In today's video, we're going to be talking about Spencer from the Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends universe. Spencer is a tendered 462 streamlined steam locomotive with a silver paint job. He is privately owned by the Duke and Duchess of Boxford. Personality wise, Spencer is pompous, snobby and arrogant with a huge superiority complex to boot. He has no camaraderie with the other engines and in fact tries to get the other engines scrapped. Wow, with friends like that, who needs enemies? Now Spencer does have a family relationship with one of the other locomotives. He's Gordon's cousin, but Spencer and Gordon do not get along despite being cousins. As with all locomotives in the Thomas the Tank Engine universe, Spencer is based on a real locomotive. He's based on the London and Northeastern Railway, or LNER, Class A4 Pacific 462 streamlined tendered locomotive. The term Pacific was just a globally known way to refer to the 462 steam locomotive. One possible origin for the Pacific naming convention may have started with a 462 that was shipped to New Zealand across the, you guessed it, Pacific Ocean. The Class A4 locomotives were built between 1935 and 1938 with 35 units being produced. Streamlining refers to a design that is more aerodynamic in shape, thus reducing air resistance. The result of streamlining, besides looking super cool, is an increase in speed. In normal service, they typically traveled about 90 miles per hour, but when put to the test, they could reach speeds of 126 miles per hour. We mentioned earlier that Gordon was Spencer's cousin. Gordon is based on the GNR, or Great Northern Railways, Class A1, which is also, like Spencer, a 462 Pacific. Aside from the various upgrades that distinguish one class from another, the big visual difference between the two is that Gordon does not have the level of streamlining that Spencer has. At any rate, the Class A4s were withdrawn from service between 1962 and 1966, though six A4 examples are preserved. Okay, let's take a detailed look at Spencer and his Special Express Coach. Okay, so let's start taking a look at uh, Spencer from the side here. And I think the first thing you're going to notice about Spencer as compared to, say, some of the other larger uh, steam locomotives like Gordon and Henry is that there are no really squared off um, angles here that would cause any, um, any air resistance. So even the cab doesn't have any kind of squared off um, angles here in the front. You'll notice the cab here is kind of sloped back. That's all part of the aerodynamic, um, you know, design work here to keep uh, to keep Spencer and these classes of uh, steam locomotives aerodynamic. So here, uh, probably the most distinguishing feature right off the bat, though, besides that, is that um, Spencer's kind of a gray color. They describe him as silver, but the paint here seems to be more of a silvery gray. Um, and then you notice here, there's a little bit of pinstriping here on the tender. Um, but there's really no pinstriping anywhere else on the locomotive. The uh, roof of the cab here is black, and then the front of the boiler is painted black, but that's about it. Other than that, he's pretty much um, this kind of gray-silver color. Now working from the side here, to the, uh, working from the end to the, to the front, you'll notice here that he has, uh, you can't really tell from here, you'll be able to tell more from the bottom but this is an eight wheel tender. And you can see the suspension there on the bottom of all those wheels. You'll see those wheels more, I think, from the bottom. You got a little handhold over here, and a little step in, um, and then you have um, these uh, buffers here with the silver pads, and then the, uh, the kind of that silver gray post. And then you might be able to see it from this angle, but there's a little cold load up there. Moving on to the engine, you can see here that the cab is, again, this kind of aerodynamic thing. The, the, the top of the cab here does not go above the boiler, so there's nothing to create any kind of air resistance. Um, that's, again, all part of that streamlined uh, design. And the windows here are kind of cool on the side. They've got these uh, little squared off bottoms here, but they've got the little rounded corners there on both of those. A little handhold here and then these kind of front windows here. But again, you might see it more from the front. We'll angle it so that you can see it better. But um, you can see that the cab is just kind of swept back. So very cool, very aerodynamic. And then here on the running platform, the running platform kind of runs up 
along in this kind of almost like an airfoil shape, like the wing of an airplane, if you look at the angle here, and then this little, uh, how it curves to the front here. Just a very, very cool looking engine. And the only really outside um, parts that you'll see on the boiler is you'll just see this little piping right along the top that kind of curves down at the front of the boiler. But there are no, uh, you know, you can see the chimney and the whistle here, but otherwise there are no uh, steam domes or anything like that, anything that's going to kind of cause wind resistance. And even the, uh, the chimney here has a little swept back feature right there. And then the whistle is like right in front of it, so it doesn't create any uh, kind of resistance on its own. Now, as we said uh, before, Spencer is a 462, so he's got four leading wheels, two on each side up front. He's got six drive wheels, three on each side. And then he's got two back here that are kind of hidden behind this suspension here, but there are uh, two trailing wheels there, and we'll show you those um, when, we, uh, when we do the bottom view. And so again, from the uh, introduction, the 462 configuration makes Spencer a Pacific type locomotive. He's got some nice linkage here. This is like really cool detailed linkage. Uh, very nice here. And then the, the piston here again painted gray. And then he's got a little bit of a, you can sh should be able to see it here, but he's got a little Spencer placard right there in the front. And that is uh, kind of a red background with gold lettering uh, for Spencer and then the little framing there. But uh, yeah, no, pretty cool, uh, pretty cool locomotive. Let's go ahead and give it a turn. Okay, looking at Spencer from the back, uh, you can see here that um, again, lots of curves, there's no sharp angles on this design uh, really at all. And then um, he's got the silver buffer pads um, then from the side or, you know, from other angles, you'll see that the, the posts of those buffer pads are just that silver gray. It's got the hook and loop coupler here, utility hook. Um, and then he's almost got a, uh, a like a, a diaphragm looking uh, entryway here uh, in the back of the tender. And you might be able to see the hint of the water uh, filler top there. So, yeah, and then again, I think from this angle, you'd be able to look straight on. And again, you just see no protruding, um, you know, features that would in any way create any wind resistance. All right, let's bring it around. Okay, there's really nothing uh, different about uh, this side than the opposite side, but just to give you a look. Um, again, you can see um, just I really like this this linkage here, and then you can see that the wheel spokes, like that inner uh, inner part of the of the uh, wheels here, are the same color, that same gray silver color here. Oh, down here you can see a little bit of hint of a wheel there under the suspension, those trailing wheels there. Um, yeah, but not too much uh, different here than the other side. So we'll just keep moving around. Okay, and then looking from the front here, you'll see uh, Spencer's face here. Um, like with all these Thomas the Tank Engine, HO scale locomotives, those eyes will traverse back and forth when he's in motion on the track. Um, the th difference about this face than the other steam locomotives is that this face is actually square. Now you'll see the square faces on the diesels, but you don't really see them on the locomotive, on the steam locomotives, but here, Spencer's face is kind of a rectangle, well, not really square, but kind of a uh, rectangular shape. And then from the front, again, silver buffer pads, and you can see the two lantern posts on either side of the running platform there. Um, hook and loop coupler up front, and a nice utility hook. And then from the front, you can see the whistle feature there, and then the chimney behind. Let's give this a little bit of a three-quarter angle. Uh, there's one other thing I want to point out. So we'll just turn him a little bit like so. And what you can see here is that Spencer's face actually kind of slopes back. So again, keeping with that streamlined 
aerodynamicity. Is that a word? If it's not, we just made up a word. Um, dynamicity, here, <laughs> here, aerodynamics. Um, so you can see here that that air would just kind of flow over, again, reducing resistance and just increasing speed. All right, let's take a look at the top and the bottom. Okay, we'll start off with Spencer's tender here. And you can see that um, from the top view here, we've got the coal load in here kind of glistening. Um, you know, the coal, when it's broken up, a couple of those sides of the coal are shiny. And this just emulates that so well. You've got your water filler here. This is the front of the tender that, that um, hooks to the engine and then that's the opposite side. So if we look at the back here again, you can see this kind of a hint of a diaphragm here like you would see between coaches. Um, I don't know if there's a reason to walk into the back of that tender. Um, I'm not really sure if that is a thing or why that would be there, but it probably what it does is adds to the aerodynamic dynamics of the train as a whole. In fact, the, um, the coach behind it probably, uh, its diaphragm probably meets up with that and just kind of reduces air movement between the cars. Um, that's probably how that works. Um, and then as we look at the, uh, you know, you can see the profile of the hook and loop coupler and the buffers and so forth. And then in the back here, there's no real detail in here to speak of, but there's a little step up here. Um, but again, just to kind of give you a look at all the different angles here. All right, let's take a look at the bottom. Oh, okay, not a ton of, you know, kind of modeling detail here underneath, but you can see the four axles, it's eight wheels. Those wheels are metal. Um, there's nothing functioning on this, so you, the metal wheels aren't there for any kind of electrical connectivity purposes or anything like that. Um, it's probably just there because it sounds great on the track. Adds a little bit of weight to the, um, to the rolling stock here, to the tender here, and uh, that looks good. So this is the side here that uh, will hook up to your um, coaches, and then you've got this little post here, and that hooks, into a, hooks up to a tongue with a hole in it on the locomotive. But uh, yeah, and then you've got the Bachman logoing under here and then the part number, as is pretty typical with all these uh, HO scale Bachman um, Thomas the Tank engine locomotives. Okay, looking at Spencer from the top. Hey, he's got the little widow's peak there of a, uh, of a cab design top here. You'll see the roof of that cab just kind of uh, ends off on a point here over the boiler. Again, not a lot of protruding um, features here. Uh, again, to keep the aerodynamicity going. And then you'll notice here, I think at this angle here, Evan, you, if you can kind of angle it, you can see just, oh, that's a good angle right there. Just the slope or the angling of the cab here in the window. Um, it just, you can just kind of picture the air just kind of whooshing by that um, and not creating any kind of turbulence or resistance uh, whatsoever. And remember, these, these locomotives were built in the 30s. So, you know, this, this is um, really cool stuff. And we've got a little bit of strapping feature over the boiler and then that piping, as we mentioned before. Um, but yeah, there's a view from the top and you can actually see, um, you know, Spencer's head or face kind of, um, kind of curving around the front of that boiler. There's another little roof, a very low roof feature here on the top, probably some kind of ventilation piece there and then a little couple of uh, maybe gutters here on the side of the, of the um, roof there on either side and then oh and then one more thing is that you can see that chimney kind of sloping back again all about the um, air resistance all right let's take a look at the bottom all right, looking at the bottom here, again, not a ton to see down here, like kind of modeling detail wise, um, but you can see here, this is the front, um, you know, the four um, leading wheels here. Um, there's just a pivot point right here, which is why they're, they're just not being supported there. Um, and then here we've got, you know, some screws to access the little motor compartment there. Um, and then you've got the trailing wheels here, and then you can see, even though you can't really see the wheels when the locomotive is on the track, Evan, if you can just tilt it down a little bit so we can catch the, you'll see the little wheel, oh, oh can you see the, um, tilt it so you can see the wheels here on this rear uh, bogey here. You can see that they even carry the paint scheme, uh, that kind of um, silver gray paint scheme on the spokes that you see on the rest of the wheels, or even on those little wheels that are kind of hidden by the suspension there. So that's a nice detail. And again, looking at that linkage, 
you know, the linkage has a lot of connection points, you know, which is always just makes it super interesting to look at when it's on the track. Um, yeah, got the Bachman logoing and I'm sure there's a part number there somewhere that it's just not in sight here. Um, but yeah, just to give you a look at the bottom, just a really kind of a spectacular, to me, it's a spectacular looking engine just because of the technological leap they're trying to make by making it so streamlined. Okay, so there you have it. There's Spencer and there's a detailed look at Spencer. Let's uh, give it one more spin. Okay, next up is Spencer's special coach. So this is the coach that uh, belongs to the um, Spencer locomotive here. And this uh, coach is actually the exact same mold as Gordon's Express coaches. So um, it's the exact same car. The only thing different is the paint job and actually the color of the roof. So um, we've done a pretty detailed look at uh, Gordon's Express coaches before. So if you've seen that, um, this is gonna be a lot of the same descript description wise, um, but uh, yeah, but we'll just go through it. So here, the most distinguishing feature here of Spencer's special coach is this nice red paint job. In addition to the red paint job, you've got this orange pinstriping um, that goes right down the side. In addition to that, you've got four doors. These are non-functioning doors. These are just kind of stamped into the plastic only. And those doors have a little bit of painted brass uh, uh, hardware here on the door handles and then like a little hand grab there for the passengers to kind of pull themselves up into the coach. And the other nice feature about this is that it actually has an interior. So this is kind of one of those side corridor uh, coaches, um, kind of like the what you would picture like on the Harry Potter movies when they're moving up the, the, um, uh, that side corridor and then you know entering their cabins uh, for the trip. Same idea. Um, but, it, uh, but the interior is in there, so that's uh, pretty cool. We'll try to get you a shot inside those windows when we get a close-up view. Um, hopefully the glare of the lights on these clear plastic windows um, won't, uh, <clears throat> won't make it so that you can't see in there. But uh, yeah, so then um, on the roof line here, you can see that there's this kind of gutter type of feature here along the roof line. You'll see that more from the top, um, designed, of course, to just shed uh, water off the roof so it doesn't, you know, drip all over the passengers in the event it's raining. And that roof is a nice gray roof. It's a kind of a glossy uh, gray uh, roof there. And then down below, we've got the... Um, the trucks down here with the suspension, there's some nice detail there. And then some um, framework here with some, you know, uh, some of the coach mechanics down here, uh, which is a nice detail. So uh, let's give it a turn. Okay, so from the back here, you can see we've got a nice kind of arched roof here. And then we've got the, um, what would I guess qualify as a diaphragm right here. This would be the pass through between the cars, this little door area here. And then you've got that um, orange bumper here that is kind of a carryover of that pinstriping from the side, the same color. And then you've got a utility hook down here and you've got um, silver painted buffer pads. And then again, that orange uh, color there for the um, buffer uh, posts. And then you've got the hook and loop coupler here. Now this side of the coach here is a little bit different than the opposite side and that it has a lot more windows. So the window count here on this side um, is different than the other side here. But again, you've got some doors here the doors are more numerous, there's four on the opposite side, and there looks to be about one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven doors on this side. Um, and they, but you've got that same orange pinstriping carrying through. Mechanics down here on, under the undercarriage here that um, kind of hang down, which is, again, also very cool. And then you've got your uh, 
uh, double axle trucks on either end with the suspension, braking and all that. All right, let's give it one more turn. All right, this end of the coach is exactly the same as the opposite end. You've got this kind of diaphragm type of structure here uh, to connect the, uh, the different coaches together so people can pass between coaches. And then again, the silver buffer pads and so forth and the hook and loop coupler. All right, let's bring it around full circle. If I didn't mention it earlier, this, this uh, coach comes in at about 10 inches in length from coupler tip to coupler tip. And I know I didn't mention it before, but Spencer, um, along with the locomotive with the um, tender, comes in at about 12 inches. All right, let's take a look at the top and the bottom. All right, looking at the top here, you can see, again, this is kind of a glossy, um, you know, plastic roof here. Um, it's a gray in color. And then you've got this little vent work here along the top, these little vent uh, features. And then you've got uh, a couple little features on the end of each, uh, at the end of each, um, uh, the end of the roof there on either end on opposite sides. And then you might be able to see that rain gutter feature on both sides of the roof, kind of arching uh, over the midpoint and then kind of coming down to the corners of the roof on either end. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at the bottom. Okay, looking from the bottom here, you can see, um, you know, the double trucks here on either end, two axles on each truck. Uh, that's, those are metal wheels. Um, there's no connectivity in here. Um, there's no um, lighting or anything along those lines. Um, on these coaches. Um, hook and loop coupler, again, you've got this kind of suspended undercarriage here um, with some details. Details there are more kind of appreciated from the side. There's no real modeling detail uh, underneath here um, to speak of, but you've got your Bachman logoing and then you've got your part number and so forth. Kind of stamped into the bottom there. But uh, yeah, just to give you a look at the, at the bottom of that. All right, let's give Spencer's special coach one more spin. We'd definitely like to pick up a couple more of these just to give um, get some matching coaches and give Spencer a little bit more to haul here on the railroad. So. And just as one final look here, we wanted to show you um, Gordon's Express Coach and Spencer's Special Coach side by side, just so you can see the similarities between the two. Like I said, they're basically the same coach. There is one slight difference that we noticed here as we got them up on the turntable, and that's that Gordon's Express Coach has a slightly more extended um, diaphragm area there. Um, so the Express Coach diaphragm is fairly flat to the back of the coach, whereas Gordon's, you know, has a little bit more, um, you know, sticks out just a little bit more than that. But that's the one difference here. I'm sure that's just a feature that was added on to Gordon. But um, yeah, let's give him a spin side by side so you can uh, appreciate the full uh, 360 here. Okay, so there you have it. That is Bachman's HO Scale Spencer and Spencer's Special Coach from the Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends universe. Let's take them out on the layout and see this beautifully streamlined locomotive in action.